All right, my beautiful followers, good afternoon and welcome to today's class. In today's class, I want us to look at this particular device and see what we can make of it. So this is a contactor. Um, if you look at the nameplate here, you are going to see a few write-ups. Um, this is a 30 amps contactor and it has a maximum voltage of 1000 volts. All right. And here, this is a three-phase unit. Uh, you have your L1, L2, and L3. This is the input power, the three-phase power. They come in into L1, L2, and L3. And then down here, you have T1, T2, and T3. These are the terminals where you connect your load. For example, your three-phase motor. And then this is where we have the auxiliary terminals. The difference between these terminals and these terminals is that these terminals are for main power that drives our machine but the auxiliary terminals are used for control you can use this to control the behavior of this contactor or the behavior of a neighboring contactor or any other device all right so this is actually a switch is a power switch but it is different from this type of switch this is a circuit breaker where you can um, put on and off this way in this particular one, you don't operate it with your hand. You operate it by sending a signal to the unit through these two terminals here that are labeled A1 and A2. This A1 and A2 go to the coil of this contactor. So what happens here is that when this coil is energized, when I say energized, I mean when you send power. This is rated 220 to 230 volts. So when you connect 220 volts here, this coil will behave like a magnet and it's going to attract the moving part of this contactor and this place will go inside. And when this place goes inside, this terminal and this terminal will connect together, this terminal and this terminal will connect together, this terminal and this terminal will connect together, and this terminal and this terminal will connect together. Now, this auxiliary terminals we have here, it is labeled, if you look closely, NO means normally open what it means is that now that we have not energized the coil of this contactor this terminal and this terminal are open when i say open i mean they are not connected together all right so all these ones are not connected together so this one which is the auxiliary is also not connected together there is another auxiliary terminal you, you might find in other contactors where you have nc which is normally closed what it means is that when this coil, A1 and A2, they don't have power, when this coil is not energized, this terminal and this terminal are connected together, means they are closed normally. That is why you call them normally closed. And this type that is open is called normally open. So this is our contactor. But this is not what we are here for today. What we are here for today is to talk about a special control used to control this contactor to switch on a motor by sending a switch on signal only once. You send that signal and you remove the signal and this contactor will remember that signal until you want to switch it off and you take off the entire power completely. That is the only time it loses its memory. So it remembers the signal that you sent to it. So in that case, this is what we call the contactor holding circuit so what it does is that when you send a signal once to this coil this contactor will close and it will remember that signal even when you have removed that signal you've stopped sending the signal it will just close and it will remain closed remembering that signal you sent until you take off power it's only power that will wipe out the memory of this contactor so let us do the wiring first of all i'm going to mount this contactor to the rail first of all by hooking here on this side and then pressing down the body of this contactor until this place latches you're going to hear a click so i'm going to put it like this it goes in like this and then you push this side down and then you hear that click so this guy is already mounted so what we're going to do now is we're going to connect power let us connect a1 sorry i'm going to show you a1 so i'm going to take this off again so I'm going to connect this A1 now to our neutral, first of all. And then this A2 is going to be the life. 
So I'm like, I will latch it back. Now I'll pick up. We we'll always use um, our blue to represent our neutral. So I pick up, I'm going to clean up this wire a little bit and I'm going to strip it like this and I'm going to connect it to our neutral bar. This is our neutral bar. So I'm going to lock this guy up this way and this stays firm. So now I'm going to connect it to A1 at the back as I said earlier. So I'm going to slack this out and insert this wire and then I will lock it up. So this is connected now. So the next thing to do is to connect the life from our mains breaker to this one. Okay. So um, I'm going to use this wire. So I'll just connect it on any of the phases. This one, I'll connect it here. I will lock this up. Okay, so if I take this wire, let me just put this one on. If I put this on and I take this wire and I connect it to A2, let me remove this again so you can see. If I take this wire from life and I put it here, which is the A2, this contactor will close this way. It has closed. If I remove it, it is de-energized. Now it's energized. If I remove it, it's de-energized. That way. Okay? So I'm going to put this off while we continue. So instead of connecting this wire to A1, I'm going to connect it to the normally open. That is the auxiliary terminal. Remember, I told you that this auxiliary terminal can be used to control the behavior of this contactor or the behavior of a neighboring contactor. So I'm going to connect it to this normally open auxiliary contact. So I'll slack this out, and then I will insert this wire, and then I will lock it up. So the next thing to do is I'm going to connect from the second terminal of our auxiliary um, terminal. I will put this wire here, slacking this out and then I'll lock it up this is not in so I'll slack this out again insert my wire and then I'll lock it up so this particular wire now I'm going to take it to A2 alright I'm going to take it to our A2 let me show you what I mean I'll take it to this our A2 so to do that, I'm going to slack out this one. Just slack it out. Clean this wire up a bit and insert it here. When that is done, I'm going to close this one. All right? So this is where I've connected it. So I'll latch this back. All right? So see what I mean? If I close this switch this way, now, you see this contactor is still not energized. Now, I'm going to send in a signal briefly, just this one, into the system from where we connected the life. I'll put this one here. And then the other end of this wire, I'll just tap it here. You see, the contactor has closed. And I've removed the signal, and it still remembers that signal. That is why it is still on. And for this to go off, you need to put off this one. So even when you put this back on, it will not remember anything again. For it to remember it again, you need to send in that signal briefly again, just one second, like that, and you remove it. And it remembers it again. All right, so for us to now have a switch that will do that function, we put this off, and then we have this switch. All right, this switch, you just you push it to send that signal and you remove your hand and the signal is removed. So this switch is going to do that job of this wire, what this wire was doing for us. Okay, so we're going to use this switch. So to do that, we're going to connect the wire on this one. We're going to do that by slacking out here. And then we will insert this one. And then we will lock it up. 
Okay? And then we take this wire and we connect it to the terminal of this our switch. So to do that, I will have to slack out on this one and then insert this wire properly and then I will lock it up. Okay, it is locked up. And then I will pick up a second wire, connect it to this one because remember we use that wire from here and tap here for it to close. So I'm going to take the second wire from here. We'll slack this out, insert the wire carefully and then you lock it up. And then you take this wire, so I'm going to clean this up a bit. I'm going to strip it nicely that way. And then I'll pick up our switch and then I will insert our wire and then I will lock it up that way. So this is what we have. So now, if we put on this breaker and we press this, this guy should close. If we remove our hand, it will remain closed this way. So it remains closed. So for this to forget this memory, to wipe out this memory and de-energize this contactor, what we need to do is we can get this wire and cut it. When we cut it, this will open. And there is a switch that will do that cutting for us. And this is the off switch. So we'll connect this off switch between this wire that we just cut now. It's going to do that job of off for us. So we'll open this breaker again. So the next thing to do is to get the end of this wire that we just cut. We'll strip it neatly. Get this one also. Strip it neatly. And then pick up our switch. Um, we need to know which one is normally open and normally closed. So this one is normally closed, while this one is normally open. So we are working with normally closed. So we're going to take this one. So this one comes here. And then I will lock it up. And then the second wire, I'm going to slack this one out. The second wire comes here. And of course, I will lock it up. So right now, we have two switches which we are working with. These two switches. We have this one for on and this one for off. So our breaker is on right now. So to put on this contactor, we need to press on, which is like this. So it is on. It remains on until we press off to open that signal and it goes off. So you put on this way and then to put it off, you press this one and it goes off. So for us to operate a machine using this one, it's now for us to connect the three phase to this L1, L2 and L3 and then connect our load, like our motor, on T1, T2, T3. So, if you like this video, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any question, uh, let me know in the comment section or you send me a private message. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and, of course, continue to stay connected with me for more tips on power. Thank you very much.